Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on my tutorial series on quantum statistics. This is video number 27. I'm going to discuss briefly the method of Lagrange, Lagrange multipliers and why it works. Now, look, I'm not doing a course in mathematical physics, so I'm not going to be doing four or five, maybe six videos on Lagrange multipliers. This is just for physics students, just to show you why it works, and uh, hopefully you can, you can accept it. And to be honest, I'd be shocked if you haven't seen this in your uh, university classes yourself. So, what is a, a method of Lagrange multiplier? Well, or the method of Lagrange multiplier? So what, what's it for? Well, it's for optimization. Okay, so trying to get maxima or minima. Okay, but it's um, subject to constraints. Okay, now why is this important? Because we know, let's say we have a function f, a function of x and y and z. Well, we know that d, we know that df is equal to del f, del x, dx, plus del f, del y, dy, plus del f del z dz okay that's that's the function now or that's the infinitesimal change in in f and in order to maximize or minimize it what we do is we set that equal to zero okay i'm sure you've seen that a million times okay because if it's if if the rate of change is zero well then you're at a maximum or a minimum that's essentially what that means but the thing is there there is no scope here to add a constraint you know you might say well uh, like, I don't know, let's think of an artificial problem, you might say, well, how, how many hours work should I do in order to maximize my money, but I also want to maximize my happiness? You know, you might, you'd have, you'd be trying to maximize your money with the constraint of uh, trying to maximize your happiness at the same time. That sort of thing might be a, a, a problem for Lagrange multipliers. Alright, so, the, um, the, max, maximize, the maximization or the optimization occurs when functions are tangent. So functions are tangent. Why would we say that? Let's say, for example, we have a function, and I'm going to draw it specifically so that it's easy for me to, to, to draw it. Okay, it's, it's not particularly, a, it's not, I'm not trying to have mathematical rigor here. Let's say this is my constraint function. Okay, I'm going to call my cons constraint function g. And let's say that I have, here is my my function f, which I'm trying to maximize. So I want to I want to try and maximize f with respect to g. So the point is, I want to keep growing it and growing it and growing it until it touches g. Now, when something is maximized, or excuse me, when, yeah, when it is maximized, it's maximized only at one point. Now I know I've drawn it poorly, but when it is maximized, it will only be touching the constraint function at one place, and as a result, it will be tangent. That is the definition of something. If something, if your function or two functions touch, well then they are tangent to each other. Next, if they're tangent to each other, they their their normal vectors will be the will be. We'll say there's the normal vector for g, okay, and they're just there. But at this point, there's the normal vector for g, okay. Now, where's the normal vector for f? So there's the normal vector there here, and at this point, there's the normal vector for f. The point is. Because they are touching each other at one point and they are tangent, their normal vectors are anti-parallel. Or we'll say um, to draw it, kind of, you might say that the the red normal vector is proportional to the blue normal vector. Okay, and we might say that the red normal vector, the red normal vector, is equal to the blue normal vector multiplied by some sort of constant. Okay, some proportionality constant, which we might call beta or whatever it is. And that's essentially, that we call this our Lagrange multiplier. It enforces our constraint. So that's what we do. Now, what, how do we calculate a normal vector? A small bit of vector calculus will tell you that the gradient of your function equals your normal vector. Okay, so what we've said so far is that when f is constrained by g or is maximized by g, their normals will be parallel or with they will be proportional. So how we write this is as follows. We say that the gradient of f is going to be parallel to the gradient of the constraint. Alright? So, let's come up with an artificial example. Let's say that we have 
two constraints. We have f, a function of x, y, z. We have g, a function of x, y, z. And we have h, a function x, y, z. So these two here are my constraints. Okay, so g, x, y, z is equal to constant and is equal to constant like that. Now, for some reason, we always, no matter what way it is, we always write them in the form of, uh, you know, g is equal to a constant or h is equal to a constant. That's just the way it's written. So I wouldn't worry about that. So let's get our normal vectors. So just apply the, uh, the, the gradient. So we're going to get f sub x is equal to lambda g sub x plus, we'll say, mu uh, h sub x. And we're going to get f sub y is equal to lambda g sub y plus mu h sub y and f sub z is equal to lambda g sub z plus mu h sub z. Okay, whereas alpha is the Lagrange, or excuse me, lambda is the Lagrange multiplier which enforces the constraint on f subject to g and mu is the Lagrange multiplier which enforces the constraint on f subject to h. Okay, so we have two functions, we have two Lagrange multipliers, n functions, we have n Lagrange multipliers. So very quickly then, to show you the example that we'll actually be using, at some point in our optimization problem for the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, we're going to get something that looks like the following. We're going to get d, um, let's say log p like this, and that's going to be, that's going to be a function of n sub s. Okay? I'll explain this in a moment. But it's going to be su subject to n, which is a function of n sub s, and it's going to be a fu uh, subject to e, a function of n sub s. Right? So my point here is this. I'm going to have a, going to have a function d, the, we'll say the infinitesimal change of the logarithm of the probability. And it's going to be a function of the number of particles. But it's subject to the total number of particles, which is also uh, subject to the, um, the number of particles in a macro box. And it's also subject to the total energy, which is also so, uh, so, uh, also a function of the total number of particles in a, a, a macro box. So let's just apply. We need to get the normal vectors, okay? So we're going to get del log p, del n sub s, okay? That's the normal vector of our function. We're going to let it equal to the Lagrange multiplier alpha. Actually, I'm going to draw it in a different color the Lagrange multiplier alpha, which enforces the constraint, the first constraint, which in this case is going to be del n, del small n sub s, and we're also going to have a second Lagrange multiplier in order to enforce the second constraint. I'm going to, the Lagrange multiplier is going to be beta, and this time it's going to be del e, del n sub s. And when we solve this one here, we're going to get the maxwell boltzmann uh, occupancy function or probability function. Okay, that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. And you might also have a look at universityphysicstutorials.com. Thanks.